Good morning, friends. Good morning. Welcome to this worship service. Everybody gathered here and people will be joining us later on Facebook and YouTube. Warm welcome to you as well. Um, before we begin, we'd like to welcome those who are here for the first time. Anyone here for the first time? We've all been here? Okay. Um, before we begin our sharing, I'd, li I'd like to thank Pastor Ryan McDonald as he ministered to God's Word last Sunday and for filling in the pulpit. Thank you very much, Ryan, and I'm sure that that was a word of great blessing for all of us, and we look forward to the next time when we can, we can um, uh, um, hear you. Um, I also have an announcement to make about, about Pat Snook. So Pat Snook is or has been our organist, and many of you were wondering why she is not coming here anymore. Um, and I waited for a while because we were trying to fix some things. She is not able to come here, and she found it difficult to keep up with the requirements of her job as an organist, mainly health reasons. And so we wanted to create some space, and we gave, and we decided that we'll have some time off for her to have some time off when uh, she was expected to recover. Unfortunately, that period of recovery that the church offered to her was also not enough for her to make a recovery that would uh, enable her to come back and resume her responsibilities in a professional way. And so then we had to uh, uh, look for another organist. And so the SPPRC has put out an advertisement for another organist. But Pat continues to remain our member, and the last time I visited her, she said that she really misses being here, and she said, tell the congregation that, that I love you, each one of you. And I'm sure that we all have the same message in our hearts to give her, that we love her as our sister in Christ, and uh, she will come back to church when she's able to, but till then, let's remember her um, in our prayers as she's going through a lot of things in her life. So that is an update on PAD. Okay, today's service is um, promises to be a very exciting one. As you will notice, it is Reformation Sunday, and you'll find it right in the back of your bulletin, a little word of explanation about what this day is uh, commemorates. And today is also the Men's Ministries Sunday. And the men are very excited. You must have seen them walking around with a spring in their step. It's not very often that men get to talk, I'm just saying. And so, so it is, um, I mean me of course, and that's only professionally, not otherwise. <laughs> um, anyway, so it promises to be a, a, a beautiful service where we can listen to God and the message that he has for us in various ways. So let's keep ourselves open to receiving God's blessings and the way he wants to give it to us. At this time, let's, um, this is the time for you to share things that have been happening, especially in the last week, something that happened that you want to praise God for and also share matters of concern. Does anyone have anything to share? No, it's been a good week. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, David. Just as you. Her daughter died yesterday. Just. Claudia Stevenson, that used to come here, her daughter died yesterday. 
Oh, Claudia's so, daughter, she passed away. We're very sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, just a couple weeks ago, my daughter was telling me that my grandson's gonna start playing football. He got out of band and then started playing football. And then uh, they found out also he was trying to get into the uh, Marines and uh, he could, uh, certain thing issue that um, he could take some college classes to qualify too and he could take them through the school and one of the other daughters thought that was interesting she thought that was pretty cool so uh, in Arizona uh, you can take college classes through your high school uh, so and then I just found out yesterday that uh, two of my granddaughters are in a one of the top wrestling schools in Arizona at a, just a elementary school age so that's pretty cool so excited to share that thank you Thank you, Eric. Anyone else wants to share anything? Michael, I thought you, no, okay. All right, so let's praise God and let's uh, start this service on a note of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude. Let's all together say praise the Lord loudly. Praise the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. I am uh, surrounded by uh, trees. <laughs> I can't see a Caesar. Uh, a pastor from the uh, where I sit, I uh, as I stand here, I feel like a potted plant up here. Uh, hopefully, don't look like one. But uh, it being football season, yay Iowa! Yes. And uh, too bad Iowa State. Uh, too bad. Uh, okay. I always root for them, except when they're playing Iowa. Then I have to choose sides. Too bad. Okay. Well, let's get into our prayer in unison. Uh, righteous one, hear our cries in the bitter watches of the night. We come before you with zeal in our hearts, ready to stand at our watch posts, ready to receive the vision we promise your people. We come seeking justice for the weak, hope for the downtrodden, and healing for the afflicted. In times of trial, we yearn to seek your face and behold the glory of your salvation. Be the vision we need that we may find the courage to persevere that salvation may come to you our homes this day through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> now please stand if you are able for our first hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus on uh, found in the hymnal. Uh, page 514 uh, or on the screen and then remain standing for the affirmation of faith and uh, then you may be seated so
now turn to the Apostles' Creed found on page 881 in your hymnal or on the screen. Let's read together. I believe in Father, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He set it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the red sins, the resurrection of the bun, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful season where every leaf is a flower. We realize that, like in other creation, you have created each one of us beautiful. And sometimes that beauty is marred by things we do or things that are done to us. But you are the God of restoration. You give us opportunities to reform, to transform, to be restored to the original brilliance of your design for us. As we gather together to worship you, bless our gathering, receive our praise, and speak to us in a language that each of us can understand in the reality of our respective circumstances. As we come seeking to see your face, satisfy our longing and bless us that we may be revived and renewed. We want to thank you for the special blessings our members have received. We thank you for Joanna Tuttle, Cynthia Blackford, and Penny Jews as they celebrate birthdays. Thank you for your protection and provision for them. We ask that you would continue to bless them. Please keep them experiencing your good things. Bless them with many more occasions for joy and special thanksgiving. At this time, we also bring before you those of us who are afflicted in various ways. Lynn Ball, Bruce and Cindy Brown, Jaylene and Marvin Barton, Don and Elaine Burke, Greg Downs, Dale Johnson, Karen Christensen, Rod Dale, Pat Snook, Melissa Carpenter, Jessica Handel, Alex Shipman, Kathy Tollerud, Haley Handel, Greg Chase, and Tom Williams. Lord, as I look to you for your grace and healing, please touch them. And by your touch and by your presence, strengthen them as they go through various kinds of pains. Please let them not be dejected or discouraged. 
Bless them to experience your peace and joy even during these times. Father, at this time, we also lift up friends and family of these dear members who are no more with us. Phyllis Jean Smith, Sean Hess, Shannon Naiman. Please comfort these families and bring peace to their hearts in the promise of your eternal love, in the eternal life which awaits us after this one. Lord, this morning we also heard about Claudia as she lost her daughter. We pray for her that you would be with her, comforting her and bringing her peace in the promise of eternal life that we have in you. Lord, bless the leaders in this world as they make decisions that affect thousands and millions. May they always be guided by visions of peace and harmony. Bless the leaders of the United Methodist Church with wisdom and strength as there are decisions to be made, issues to be understood, people to be understood, a way forward to be prepared. We believe that your grace is sufficient for us and may our decisions always be guided by your grace, which we receive and which defines us as your people. Thank you for the men's ministries at our church. Thank you for the passion, the strength, the love, the resilience you have given our members here. At times, things seem difficult as our faculties seem to be on the decline, but you renew our youth. And as we wait upon you, Lord, and make our efforts with whatever strength you give us, we know it pleases you. As, we saw, as we'll be seeing in the ministries that will be described today, we will continue to walk and not be weary, run and not faint, because our strength comes from you, who enable us and equip us. All glory be to you. Bless our fellowship time after the service. Grant that we may continue to grow closer to you, closer to each other so that we may experience your blessings not only as individuals, but also as a church family. All of this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hold it here. Put it right there. Okay. All right, uh, Genesis 1 through 31. Day one, God created the heavens and the earth. Day two, God created light and separated it from the darkness. Day three, God separated water from the land. Day four, God created two great lights, the sun and the moon. Day five, God created great creatures of the sea and birds and let the land produce living creatures. Day six, God created mankind in his own image, both male and female. And day seven, God rested from all the work he had been doing. So the theme of this presentation is wilderness. And as you may have seen um, some things on the screen, we want you to watch and count for the different number of animals or creatures on the wilderness scenes throughout this presentation. And just as as a fun thing, let's see maybe how many of you um, get the right number. I don't think it's going. There we go. I understand what you mean about being in a forest. <laughs> now, I've, I've been asked to do two things. I've been asked to speak to you and at the same time work a mouse. Now, that's almost impossible for me to concentrate on two things at once. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, we went down, I say we, uh, Greg Downs and I, uh, we went down to Bidwell Riverside. We had decided, the men of the church, that we wanted to take on a, uh, some kind of a mission project. So we went to Bidwell, and uh, uh, we met a woman there by the name of Sammy Palmer. And uh, when Greg and I went in and talked to her and told her, well, we, we were talking about uh, uh, doing some kind of ministry, and what we were intending on doing was taking on Bidwell as a project, she sat there and cried because she was desperately looking for someone to do some maintenance work around Bidwell Riverside. It had become quite deteriorated. Virgil, this thing isn't doing its thing. Uh, anyway, we, we started out just Greg and I went down and it grew and it grew and it grew. Pretty soon we had there must have been at least 20 of us involved at one time or another in working at Bidwell. Um, one of the projects that came up was to build a building in the back for clothing and for, uh, for the food pantry. And uh, we needed some expertise in getting that done. Well, Chuck Marvin uh, was, was in that kind of business prior to retirement. So he helped us considerably uh, in getting that thing built. Uh, We painted the main building, we roofed one of the other buildings, and uh, at one point, the parking lot around there, excuse me, the parking lot around there was just gravel. And I had met a gentleman by the name of John Clark, who was a home builder, a developer, and I went begging. And I said, and my expectations was if I could get 100 or $200 out of this man to help for, with this parking lot, I, I would have, to have it made. 
uh, he says, okay, he said, I'll see what I can do. The following Saturday, people from Des Moines Paving moved in with paving equipment, a bulldozer, and trucks, and they totally leveled and paved the parking lot around Bidwell Riverside. What you see there today is what was done then. Again, I talked to John Clark one day. I said, John, I says, we're having trouble because every time we get a heavy rain, uh, we get flooding in the basement. He said, well, he says, Does that have, is that building tiled? I says, I don't think so. So the next thing I know here, a man shows up with a, uh, a backhoe, a small one, and it totally uh, removed all the dirt from around the foundation of the building. Another crew came in and laid tile and put in a, a sump pump, and uh, then we backfilled it. And uh, we didn't pay a dime. But it was amazing what we could accomplish just by asking people at certain times and what for things we needed. There was a van that we were using that was, there were holes in the floor of it with plywood laying on top of it and that's what we were picking up the supplies for the, uh, for the food pantry. And I made the trip to go out to start looking for, see if we could get a small truck donated I went several places and I ended up out of Charles Gavis Ford. And uh, they ushered me into Charlie's office and uh, sat down and, and gave him an idea of what, I, what we wanted. And his first question out of his mouth was, well, what is your job? I said, well, I said, I'm a retired fireman. That's all it took. <clears throat> he turned around and picked up his phone and called his service manager or his sales manager and says, get this man a truck. To which he donated almost the full price of that truck to us, just out of asking. But Bidwell is, uh, has been part of what we do as United Methodist men for quite some time. I wish I could give you some of the pictures to show you just what we, some of the things that we went did down there. Uh, I'll let Virgil take care of that. <laughs> okay, here's some of the items he talked about. We remodeled classrooms, just uh, unbelievable how many uh, classrooms we modeled. And I got to get, we, uh, we, this mouse worked last, oh, here we go. Okay, uh, we had to change the lights in the kitchen, and that's great. Now, that mouse does not count toward your count that you see up next to Greg, all right? <laughs> okay. And there we are remodeling another bathroom. We just kept remodeling and building. Boy, we just, geez, okay. Now that's, that's uh, like Harden mentioned, we had to change his sump pump and then they blame me for not doing anything. Well, you can see I'm, I'm sitting there on a bucket, you know, painting. <laughs> So, let's see. And there's Chuck Marvin painting. The windows, we painted all the windows, different colors, as you can tell. It looks a lot different. And I'm really disappointed in why our mouse isn't working, uh, Caesar, but that's all right. Rich Cameron, which is no longer worth with us, he was working down there. That day, it was hot. And Harlan says, I got to get off this roof. It's too hot. Once again, there's a classroom we finished. Put a new floor in. That we painted the wall. There's Dick Peters, which is no longer with it. He was involved. And there's what Harlan was talking about. Uh, we had to get that uh, drainage around the building changed so where it wouldn't flood our, our classrooms anymore down there. We spent a lot of time down there. There's Harlan <laughs> working down there, uh, getting that, helping get that dirt. He, he lined up these outfits to come in and donate their equipment. And there he is with uh, Charles Davis where he got the, uh, the, the Cuba truck. We didn't have to work on our knees any longer, people. That was great. That was, a, that was like going into a new century. 
Now this lady kept us going because she always had a treat for us when we'd come back to Bidwell. So we looked forward to that all the time. She always had some little treat for us. Hobo dinner. Well, I got heck because I thought we were both going to dress like hobos, but only one of us did. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the mouse won't work over there. This, uh, it did. This is our, this was made by Lawrence Birkenholz, and he built this for us just for this purpose, for our hobo dinner. Uh, what we do is we bring two cans, we dump one in here, and the other one goes to the food pantry. There's no cost. Virgil and Harlan have been doing it for years. They go and get the meat brown, and then it'll be in the pot, and as you come, you just pour in what you got. There's no filler, no anything. It's just vegetables out of the can. So it's kind of... And, and Virgil really likes uh, spinach in there. He just makes him so happy. He wants spinach all the time. Anyway, uh, we have a great time out there, a good fellowship. Uh, Caesar's been a number of times that we've been here. Bob came uh, a couple times so far. I think Dave's been there. Most everybody up here has been there more than once. But it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of, a lot of, it was, here it was, this is out of Cuddy's when the Williams used to be there. And we go out there and we did a little shelter house, which was no more than a roof with four pillars, but it was there. So anyway, we're going to give you guys a sample of this. you got Brad and I up here. Normally we... We get the fire started before Virgil gets there. We get this all going and everything. But he'll make a treat, which you guys are going to be uh, get a chance to have this afternoon or this morning, whenever we're done. Here. And I've got cornbread that I you normally we normally do them in the Dutch oven. So this won't be in the Dutch oven, but it'll still be just as good. Yeah, this this uh, hobo dinner has been kind of a treat for me since I've been coming to this church, you know, and I've seen a lot of guys you know going to the hobo dinner since i started here that I've passed on and it's just kind of a tradition and a ritual and and just something unique you know that we go out and either our park and used to go to al bergenbein's place behind his barn and we went out to, like you said cutties and now we're going out to in virginia's and then and we went out and we went out uh now there was one other place, but we're Thomas Mitchell now. now we're going out to Thomas Mitchell. But you pour your can into the big pot, and and we all kind of have a nice fellowship out there with for this. Just those guys kind of kind of relax a little bit. Thank you. Christmas sharing. I guess I'm about the. Uh, well, about the only one still alive that, no, Harlan was always there too. And uh, this Christmas sharing was, uh, oh, 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 what was that? <laughs> oh, let's see now, why do we have that that way? May I ask? Okay. I'll, I'll go with the way it is uh, right here. It shouldn't be showing that. But anyway, one thing we had to do is the Marines, uh, which I was in the Marines at one time, but I didn't go around and pick up toys. But around Christmas time, the Marines go out to these different locations and they pick up all these toys. Well, uh, so that was one of our projects at uh, Christmas sharing is going down and picking up these toys and loading them up and taking them down to a church on the south side of Des Moines. Oh, we, found, we found this out yesterday. What is going on? We found out we could come over here and it worked. <laughs> we found out we could go over there and it worked. We found out if it was on lectern, it wouldn't work. We can build buildings, we just can't work them out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we, we uh, kind of did a brief uh, go-through last night, and we thought we had it all solved, but we'll, uh, we'll wait just a minute. 
Uh, well, okay, I'll kind of go through it. Uh, you'll see us in about uh, two or three pictures uh, with picking up the toys down at KCCI. And, uh, oh, there we go. And the, so down there was uh, Harlan, uh, Juan Carrion, myself, and Greg Downs. They, uh, Greg Downs was always, was always in it. Sorry for the delay, folks. Okay, so KCI, hey, thank you. There, there we are carrying. There, there they are carrying more out packages out. Oh, it's working great. And here we are loading all them toys into the uh, the truck to take down to a church uh, that's at Des Moines Seventh Day Adventist. It's out on Fleur Drive and uh, out by Hyperion. Uh, no, not Hyperion, but uh, Wakanda Golf Course, right uh, a little bit west of there. So anyway, uh, here's, here's uh, what would happen. Now, Jared, that was, used to be with us, well, uh, the grandson, his job was keeping the bread supply going. Inside, they didn't have a whole lot of clothes, but they had uh, a lot of socks for children. They had them uh, according to ages. They had underwear for, for uh, different uh, ages. And then when they would come into this one building, there would be sacks of groceries that they would pick up. Then when they would come outside, uh, then we would give them uh, potatoes, bread, and, and we'd have turkey. And so that, they would get all that. So uh, at this time is, will be uh, Dave Bender uh, talking to you. This is the first truck we had um, to um, haul food from the food pantry, and as, and as Harlan said, it, it was in kind of rough shape, but um, it was a start. And here's the name of the people that's in the picture. And um, this is the first um, um, D-Mart warehouse we picked up the food at is on 60 or 36 in Douglas and um, here we had to do everything all by hand we couldn't use a, a pallet jack or, or anything to move the food around so we hauled it all by hand and loaded the truck by hand it was a lot of work it took a lot of people and um, usually we would haul one load um, yeah, I'm not sure which place it was, but I think it was on Forest. Oh, it's on Douglas. No, Douglas. Yeah. Now, this is on Douglas, and um, we'd take a break between truckloads, and we'd sit here and we'd talk for about maybe 20 minutes and have some coffee or and donuts. But it is a really good place, really great donuts. And then here's... Picture some of the food pe people. Here's um, the one that's on Forest Avenue. And um, I remember we'd take the two wheeler and we'd take it in there and we'd just put it up against the wall, the, the food, and then they would, they would separate it themselves. And here's the crew, some of the people it's Ron McCollin, Greg Downs, Gary Everly, Richard Cameron, and Virgil in this picture. And here's another place we, we hauled food to. Um, and um, their cold storage was a bunch of refrigerators. I remember we'd have stuff that needed to be refrigerated and we'd run away in the back and um, put the food in the refrigerator and then, then they gave out food and at this destination too. We'd pull them back and um, unload it. And we did this in all kinds of weather. We, you know, we did it every Thursday, Thursday morning. So no matter what the weather was, we were, we were off moving stuff. This is a new warehouse that they um, transferred to, to a homeless shelter and they converted it into a warehouse for food for um, D-Mart. And um, then we could start using pallets. We didn't have to throw all the food on by hand one at a time. We, we could take a pallet and, and push it into the back of a truck. And um, it, it speeded up our loading a lot. And... Um, 
So there. And here we are. Looks like we're at Bidwell here. And um, this is probably the latest. This is later in, in hauling the food. It was, it was me, um, McCollin, and, and Downs. And um, I don't know what we were doing there. We just, just took our picture, I guess. This this might be the time we got our awards because I see he's got we got an award for working there for 15 years, and that's what's in Greg's arm there. I think so is a is a is a certificate in a frame, and um, that's what it was. And then that day we let a bunch of balloons off. You know, I'm not sure what the what it was about, but we let balloons go off. And there's our names. This is another place we took food to. This is a um, a, a church, and it was beautiful. It was a very beautiful church, and um, we would store the food in there. And and um, there's the there's the door we would go into on the underneath that overhang, and um, I remember the. The bidwheel truck would barely go underneath that, but it still did. And I think when we used to pull out from this, no, not this one, is that one on on Sixth Avenue? We used to pick mulberries off a tree when we go by when they're in season, because we'd sit in this cab of the truck and pick the berries. I think Eric did that once. And here's. Um, the outreach building. Um, this is one they were talking about that they build or help build that that Harlan was talking about, and that was it. Um, also, at the end there, we we did um, help um, impact get started in hauling food too with the bidwheel truck, and um, I don't know if anybody knew that, but we helped them do the logistics for the when they first started so that's about it for me so in case you're wondering where we get all the food from over at the Sunday food products we have over at the tables, we get them all from the Windsor Heights Hy-Vee over down at Windsor Heights. I know it's a long drive, but we get there, and we always get back in time, but we made it just in time. You see what I mean? We always get... It's always so unpredictable what we get over there. Sometimes we get very much, sometimes we get very little. Especially just recently where we didn't have no single bread, no, fu no fruit, no goodies, nothing. It's completely unpredictable, but it's very fun. But actually, believe it or not, this wasn't just me and my dad just doing this. A lot of you know the very first person that did this, my grandpa, Gail Burgett. He was a very nice person. Sometimes he would always ask us to come with him. Sometimes we would always come with him to help. He would always, like, you know, make fun of, you know, the people over at Hy-Vee, like, hey, get to work over there. We're Get to work over there. You're running late. <laughs> he was a very nice person to hang out with. All the people over at the Windsor Heights Hy-Vee are very fun to hang out with. I'm telling you. It's uh, it's very unpredictable, but we make it work. But sometimes, you know, it's always fun to go over to the same place where we go to just to ha just to see all the people that my grandpa knew, my dad finally knew, and uh, we like just make it. We like to just make it our own, you know. Not just you know the bread, the fruit. Sometimes we now we now do the eggs. Uh, I wish the egg man would come out here to talk about the eggs, but it's just me. I tried to convince him to get over here, but <laughs> I'm guessing he's probably too afraid to speak up on camera and on the mic. But I'm used to that. <laughs> but either way, it's really. It's really fun to do all the bread things that my grandpa did. He carried on this legacy for I don't know how many years, probably for I have no idea how many, but let's just say he did it for many years. He, he I'm telling um so ba whew. 
excuse me, I used to get a little nervous here. <laughs> But either way, it was really fun, you know, just to carry on my grandpa's tradition. I'm pretty sure he's looking down at me saying, well done, kid, well done. <laughs> I'm sure he's very proud of me and proud of all of us. He was really good to everybody here in this church. Hopefully uh, he will be still looking down at us, continuing on, continuing on looking down at those continuing down at all of us with that same smile on his face, the same light in the eyes is the same light as I have now. <laughs> and that's my presentation. Well, I'm here to talk about the audio-visual uh, system and the people that run it. Uh, for years, Rob Brower has, has run the overhead, done a real good job at it. And uh, when Caesar started, um, he wanted to be able to, to stream uh, the services out to people that, that couldn't get here. So him and Sumi started doing that with, uh, with a camera and they would edit it and everything. And then it was uh, it was decided we should get a a uh, camera system of our own, which we did, and s some new monitors. And and uh, as some of you probably noticed, uh, there's been a few glitches and a steep learning curve. But uh, uh, besides playing the wrong songs for some of the uh, hymns and stuff, we're we're doing okay, I think. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the people that uh, that have been doing this are uh, Rob Brower, Dave Clement, Paul Sadler, Eric Redinger, David Bender, and myself. And uh, that's about all I got for that, I guess. So. Quick, your oh, show them, show them the pictures. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I get up in front of everybody, and I forget what I'm doing here. There we go. There's a view from number one camera. And that's from number two. We can move those cameras all around with a, with a mouse on a control panel back there. And so anyway, that's it for me. Okay. This is going to be short because both people are no longer alive. Uh, Ron McClellan and... Uh, and then uh, also Greg Downs. Greg Downs is mentioned a lot of times. So what we, what we had was a parishioner that was handicapped and uh, was not able to get out of the house and get to her garage to get into the vehicle. So Greg Downs and Ron McClellan uh, volunteered to build uh, what it was to, for her to be able to get out of the house. They had to put this window in right here out of the, the one room in the, the house and then they built this ramp to go down to the garage. That helped her and is continuing, continuing to help her uh, day after day. So she wouldn't have been able to get out of the house most likely without this. Okay, I'll talk about the gospel train a little bit. Uh, uh, Greg Downs used to go down to his hometown and um, bring up a train for certain events. And when that wasn't uh, able to happen anymore, uh, uh, people like Dave Clement jumped in and said, well, I can make some train cars. And so he started doing that using just two-wheel trucks you could buy from uh, uh, the hardware store and Coca-Cola barrels and a lot of uh, expertise in welding on his part and he built the train cars. Um, we decided it would look better if we actually had a little, little uh, locomotive to pull it with. So I talked to my brother and he, he uh, donated a a garden tractor for us and uh, 
There we go. Um, oh, good. Somebody's helping me out here. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can see, that's the garden tractor with uh, uh, a frame I started to build for it. And the front of it is an old uh, racing fuel barrel. And there's about 60 feet of tubing in that frame. Um, tubing and angle iron. Some of it was uh, I had to buy, but uh, uh, a lot of it was old bed frame that I had in an iron pile. And I cut it up and made it work, keep the cost down. So, and uh, there's the finished product up there. Uh, that's got uh, an old Buick hubcap on the front of it there to make it, make it look more like a boiler. <laughs> and uh, the uh, stack is just some old, old furnace vent. So, uh, used a lot of little different pieces and made it work, but. Uh, we used it on National Night Out and the kids seemed to love it. So I think I had just as much fun as the kids did driving it. So that's it for the, for the gospel train there. Veterans Auditorium, what an experience. We decided that we, us men needed some money to put in a treasury, we was broke. So we decided, let's go down to Vets Auditorium and work the concession stand. Let's see, I gotta get in, okay, here we go. So that's what we did. We, we said, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's volunteer. Oh, okay. So what we did, the first time was had, we had Juan carry on, Dick Peters, uh, uh, Harlan, myself, uh, Greg, probably Greg Downs and, and uh, Juan carry on. We go down and we uh, work the boys' basketball tournament. Uh, so when we got through all the hours that we spent, when we got through and received our money, we said we made 10 cents per hour. <laughs> That's all we made. Should we do it again? Why should we work for 10 cents an hour? So we <laughs> said, no, let's go, let's try it again. We went down to the state wrestling tournament. Them people are all hungry. We made several hundred dollars, so we decided never on the basketball. So this is Dale Johnson that couldn't be with us today, and uh, and uh, there's Dick, uh, there's Gray, uh, my son-in-law, Brad <laughs> Barkley, he's running the adding machine, and then Dick Peters. So, uh, that's what. That's how we ended up, and we ended down, up down there. And it was, uh, it was. We all, oh, and one thing that we experienced: the little tiny bottle that of water sold for about three or four dollars. We said, "There's a bigger bottle there. That's a little, not water, but it's a software drink. Why don't you buy that instead?" So we talked people out of buying that little tiny bottle of, for three dollars. So that was our experience there with that. So who doesn't like a pet neck, huh? Uh, my name's Eric and I'm here to talk about National Night Out and what a pleasant uh, idea that is to have all the local neighbors come in and be part of a picnic at Union Park Memphis Church. And we've been doing it for, I don't know, probably 20 years it seems like, and getting all the neighbors in. It's a national event and so different places around the community have that and we're fortunate to get uh, local community leaders, politicians, the firemen and policemen involved, and uh, uh, there's myself and David. Uh, we started out, I, had a, I was a former DJ, and so I had a bigger sound system and was able to pump out a lot of music and play a good variety of songs, mostly older tunes, and David's really good with knowing all the new stuff, so kind of a good mix there. And then as the years progressed, we kind of did a transition and went to the wireless. So we didn't need to bring out the big sound system and the wireless speakers or didn't need to run the cords or as much and have that. So it's a real lot easier as technology takes over. Unlike me. <laughs> uh, so one year I had a 
tried to mix it up a little bit. I, my friend uh, Rob, uh, we hosted a cycling event to promote bicycles for younger kids. And then this year, I went to the Johnston Library and learned about uh, fly fishing. And I was able to talk some of those guys in. And this year, we had a fly fishing seminar. So uh, put a whole new spin on it. Uh, thankful for people that can make the hamburgers and popcorn and watermelon and all the food there. Uh, it's always a great time to uh, celebrate and bring local neighbors in and let them get a uh, touch and feel of a Union Park Memphis Church here. So here's the gospel train. It kind of made its first appearance the National Night Out. Uh, I think Kathy Hillman even got in the back of one of them, so it made it pretty special. And now for the rubber sale. Thank you. Once again, I wanted to get somebody else up here speaking about this, but they were afraid to do that. So I'm going to talk. Uh, we, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to mention the women. The women do a lot of work with this, so I, I'm just not going to praise the men, but, but we're involved with different ways of, with the rummage sale. And uh, here we are sitting out in the garage. Now we had, we used to freeze to death because every, it was uh, later on in the fall and, or earlier in, in the spring and we put plastic up around there. But now they moved it and it's a little bit warmer, thank goodness. So we uh, sit out in the garage and we, uh, we price the goods and we really bargain well. So in case you would ever need anything, don't be afraid to, to ask on that. And uh, once we get through, we uh, take it on the bus and take it down to DAV on University. So there's uh, Dave Clements and myself loading up the bus. We, sometimes that bus is loaded with the leftover uh, items. And there's Dave right there, as you can tell. There's a lot of items. But thank goodness they have a lot of people to help us unload it. And uh, there, that shows you that we have to set up the tables. But then after the rummage is over with, we have to tear it down. And there's... Uh, that once again the women are involved with that helping as well as the men. And there I am in the bus uh, going to go on, and then probably Dave Clements is in the back so uh, down we go. And uh, there uh, so we got uh, we can't we do, do not have enough white tables in the uh, Wilmer's Hall so we have to go out in the garage and grab these old ones and cart them in like that and uh, that's uh, there's our minister, even besides being behind the pulpit, he's on one of them tables. Uh, so now I'm going to talk on Trinity also. Now Trinity is, uh, let's see, I, I'm going to show you a picture here. We're about through with this. Okay, this is Ray and Virginia Morris. Most of you remember Ray and Virginia Morris. I called him and uh, was asking him, and he started in the 19, late 1980s in going down to uh, Trinity Methodist Church and serving the children breakfast before they went to, uh, to school. And I asked Ray, I said, uh, Ray, uh, what do you do? He said, uh, well, I, uh, Virginia and I, I work on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Virginia retired a couple of years later, and she joined me on, uh, strictly on Tuesdays. But th uh, then he went on to say, I was still working when I started, so I, after I got through feeding them, I'd go into work. And then he said, well, another thing, he says, I cannot believe how many kids want peanut butter on their pancakes. So I forgot to bring one item up. So then he said also, he said that he can't, this chocolate stuff, they like this chocolate stuff on their pancakes also. Does anybody recognize that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys like that? <laughs> do you really? He said, I cannot believe how many kids like this also on their pancakes. So, uh, so I went and bought one of these. So if any of you guess the right number of animals or uh, creatures that you see, you're going to end up winning one of these. So anyway, another thing, uh, uh, Spencer, he, he talked about his grandfather. In the 80s, he was bringing products into uh, Trinity down there, Ray said. So he, so he has been working at it for a long time. 
a long, long time. Ray said he worked there for 15 years. So now I need to, okay, I'll keep going here. Now, this is the last slide, so we're getting close, folks. I, years ago, uh, talking with Outreach, I said, how about taking ice cream to the Union Park waiting pool? They said, that will be fine. So I went to Hy-Vee and I got the cheapest product I could find, no matter what was on sale, bomb pops, fudge sickles, whatever was on sale, I would buy it. And then I would I'd put it, on Thursdays, I'd put it in the cooler, I'd put it on the bus, I'd take somebody else with me if they wanted to, I'd take to Union Park, and as soon as I got down almost to the corner by the waiting pool, I'd honk the horn, them kids knew exactly where I was going to turn around and park. And the next picture you will see will surprise you. Things have changed. Look at this. Here's, here's going to be the line that I had, used to have. Oh my God. Wow. I, case after case, I'd pull up and I'd say, okay, I need two volunteers to head out because I can't have two different ice creams. Man, two ha hands go up all over the place. They knew that if they helped serve the ice cream, they'd get two treats instead of one. <laughs> so I never had any trouble having volunteers. But then a lady, after she saw this, she wrote a, ch a letter to the church and said, I used to go to the Union Park waiting pool with my mother. She said, but t this day, she said, I was out there with my mother and I saw this line. And she said, I turned to my friend and I said, that all them people are not going to be able to get into that bus. <laughs> she said, so she said she thanked us for, for taking ice cream to the park. So that, that was my story on that, and I uh, always loved uh, that happening. All right, Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Amen. So in conclusion, how many creatures do you think you saw in the presentation? This is, this is the answer, right? That's the answer. That's the answer. Any other guesses? Seven? Twelve? Nine? Any other guesses? Seventeen. All right, well, the, the right answer is 14. 14, so I'll let Virgil figure out, you know, if anybody wins. So, all right, thank you. I'll skip over the Old Testament reading. I never heard of him anyway. <laughs> he was one of the lesser known prophets, I'm assuming. Uh, we'll go right to the New Testament reading out of the book of Luke, uh, if I can find it. I had it marked, a promise. Uh, so, Luke 
chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. As follows. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. Thus end of the reading. Like I said in the beginning of the service that God's message can come to us in different ways. And today in recounting all these beautiful, wonderful ministries that our men here at church have been, have been privileged to take care of and contribute to, a message that comes out of there is the message of love and service. That service and the helping that our men have been able to do are all expressions of our faith and our love. And I think that is that itself speaks volumes in terms of being a testimony, a witness, and an inspiration for us to um, that that we can have in our life as well about love and service. God bless you. We'll just continue with the rest of the service the way it is, and um, we have the men have prepared the um, I don't know what what you call it the stew or the soup or. It, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a very special meal that they serve at the, at the hobo dinner, at, at the hobo night, and so we can um, partake of that and enjoy each other's fellowship as well. So please don't leave. If you can, stay back after the service. Now comes the announcements. Uh, We'll, for the benefit of those who are uh, looking uh, in on the video, we will go through them. Today, uh, Sunday, October 30th, is men's ministry, as you no doubt know, and a special uh, luncheon will be served immediately following worship service. Today is also Food Pantry Sunday. Please place your non-perishable food items and cash donations in the wagon. Well, it's not. It's over there uh, on the right front. Uh, all donations go to the DMARC Food Pantry if you're able. Also, please hang back after the luncheon to help set up the games for the safe harvest pantry party excuse me and I notice uh, they must have come from a farm because they refer to it as dinner uh, not dinner breakfast dinner and supper where I came from I never heard of lunch uh, so anyway the Safe Harvest Party will be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. tonight, Sunday, October 30th. If you have signed up to help, please be here a few minutes early. If you are taking your kids around for beggar's night, 
don't forget to swing by here for fun and treats. And be careful on beggar's night. Uh, please don't be careful crossing the street, whatever. The Education Committee has counseled their meeting for November. The next meeting will be held on Wednesday, December 7th at 6 p.m. The uh, Bible study group will meet at 6.30 Thursday, November 3rd. The uh, class is guided by Pastor Caesar and is very informative for novice and scholars alike. The next Sunday, very important, November 6th, Daylight Savings Time ends. Remember, it's fall back, but if you forget, get here early. Please put the coffee on. <laughs> I've been waiting all summer since March to get that extra hour of sleep. Next Sunday is All Saints Day, and we'll be honoring those who have gone to be with the Lord. Yes. Uh, we have all missed someone. Fellowship Hall is reserved for next Sunday, November 6th, from 1 to 5 p.m. for the Central Iowa Orchid Society. And please rise if you are able for the uh, hymn found in the uh, page 128 of the hymnal, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
Go in peace. Go to serve and love God using whatever opportunities God brings your way. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us in so many different ways. Thank you for the lessons of faith, the lessons of service and love. And we thank you, Lord, for all the resources and, and the capabilities that you've given to us. And as we bring them in service of you to express love to people, to accept them, and to show love and hospitality to strangers and to feed the hungry. We pray, Lord, that our service may be found acceptable in your sight. Lord, as we leave this place, we want to leave with the assurance of your presence with us to help us, to guide us at every step and at every moment as we contend with the situations that we are in and help us look joyfully into the future knowing that it is not in our strength that we live but in your strength and your love. Lord, as we meet for fellowship in the fellowship hall right after this service, bless our fellowship, bless the meal that has been prepared. Bless it for our physical and our spiritual nourishment and the strength that we receive be used back for your glory. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen.